Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you want to learn more about Snowflake, then you're absolutely in the right place. This week, I'm going to talk to you about data movement in Snowflake and what that means. Specifically, I'm going to talk about three particular areas, stages, file formats, and a copy into command. My name is Adam Morton, and I've worked with Snowflake since 2017 across a number of implementations for different clients. When I started learning Snowflake, I found it a real challenge to get hold of good, valuable, real world content content and so that's what I'm looking to do to help you guys out and I really hope these videos help you. There's quite a lot of data movement in Snowflake so if you stay till the end I'll let you know next week what I'm going to cover. I'm actually going to split up uh, these videos into two or three week segments depending on how much uh, I get through in each 10 minute slot. So stay till the end I'll let you know what I'll be continuing talking about next week and if you haven't subscribed yet and you found in these videos useful please like and subscribe, click the bell icon to get notifications as new content every week. Please uh, let me know in the comments what you think of these videos and if you've got any topics on Snowflake you want me to cover. OK, guys, let's get into it. This is uh, the short video on data movement in Snowflake. So first of all, let's talk about stages. You'll need to consider where best to stage your data. So a stage is an area to rest your data files prior to loading them into a table in Snowflake. There are two main types of stage, an external stage and internal stage. An external stage when you create an external stage to in Snowflake, you can think of it like a pointer to a third party cloud storage location. This can be Amazon S3, Google Cloud Storage, or Microsoft Azure, regardless of what platform you run your Snowflake account on. So for example, you can run your Snowflake account on Amazon and create an external stage on Google Cloud Storage or Microsoft Azure. When you create an external stage in Snowflake, this creates an object within the selected schema. The object holds the URL along with any required settings to access the cloud storage location. Before creating a stage, you will also be required to define a file format, which we'll cover shortly. Okay, external tables. So contained within the external stage, you can have external tables. These objects will metadata, which tells Snowflake where to locate those data files, which will relate to the table you're loading. This approach allows data to sit outside of Snowflake, but appears to users like the state resides within Snowflake. This can be really advantageous when you've got large amounts of data in cloud storage, but the value of it is yet to be determined by the business. So you can leave it outside, you pay less for the cloud storage, you don't need to bring it into Snowflake unnecessarily, but users can still query that data and run ad hoc experimentary analytics on it. And so I often see that getting used with a data lake style pattern. This is a very basic high level version of one where a data lake is used to store high volumes of raw data cost effectively. So in cloud storage within Azure GCP or uh, Amazon, for example. And while only a, a subset of high quality refined data is loaded into Snowflake, this can be useful when you want your data lake to remain as the source of truth. It allows you to expose a subset of key business data and model it into a format to support the business needs within Snowflake. This approach aims to ensure that the effort required to create, to guarantee the delivery of the data to the business is aligned with the data, which the value it provides to the, to the organization. And meanwhile, the majority of the data resided in the data lake then can support exploratory analytics. This looks to take a hypothesis from the business and prove it or disprove it using the data within the data lake. Internal stages. So whereas external stages are focused on data outside of Snowflake, internal stages focus on data within Snowflake. There's three different types, user, tabled and named. So a user stage is allocated to each user. This is when only one user needs to access the staging data before loading it into one or many target tables. A table stage. Each table has a stage associated with it by default. Multiple users can access the data files, but those files can only get loaded into one target table. And then finally, a named stage. Named internal stage is very similar to a named external stage, but as the name suggests, all data files exist within Snowflake. Multiple users can access data in the stage, while the data files can also be used to load into multiple target tables. We'll just pause for a second before I move on in the presentation, just to make you aware, I've got a Udemy course based on the SnowPro course certification, a range of practice questions. There's a link in the comments of the, uh, the video below in the description. Please check that out if you're interested in taking the certification. Also, I'm on LinkedIn, so look me up and connect with me and follow me for the latest news around the Snowflake courses and uh, YouTube videos I'm providing. And again, if you haven't liked and subscribed, please click the button and the bell icon to be notified because I'm posting new videos every week. Moving on to file formats. 
So before we load data into Snowflake, we need to think about the file format. The file format provides information to Snowflake on how to read and interpret the incoming file. However, you'll probably need to leverage the same file format multiple times in your solution. So it's best to define a file format once and give it a name so it can be easily referenced when you attempt to load the file. This promotes reusability, and if anything changes in the future, you only need to update the file format in one place. Okay, so this is the standard syntax for creating a file format. When you run this and, um, and replace the values with things specific to your environment, it creates an object within the defined schema. And you must also define one of the six supported file types you can see listed there. CSV, JSON, Avro, Orc, Parquet, or XML. It's worth noting as well that the file formats can also be used for unloading data from Snowflake. Data in Snowflake can be unloaded into JSON or CSV file formats. Next, the copy into command. So we've talked about stage now with data and defining a file format, but we haven't yet moved any data into Snowflake at all. So to do this, you'll need to use the copy into command. The command loads stage data into a table, so you'll be using it quite frequently. There's an example of the SQL snippet that you need to run to copy files from an internal or external stage into a table. And the copy into command also supports some basic lightweight transformations, which can simplify your downstream ETL operations. It's possible to load a subset of table data, reorder it, alias some of the columns, cast or concatenate columns. Here's a, an example of selecting just a subset of columns using the column position. So next week, um, I'm going to move on to talk about data loading considerations. So you'll want to take advantage of Snowflake's ability to load data in parallel. So it's important to consider the size of the files to be loaded. And we'll cover some of that in the file preparation topic. I'll also touch upon semi-structured data and anything specific around that and how that works slightly differently to loading um, structured data. Also, another key concept when loading data is to understand how you can prevent contention and how you set up and configure virtual warehouses, I can help you do that. One thing often overlooked at the outset of a project when planning to load data is the partition of the data within the external cloud storage. And essentially that means separating the data into a logical structure within Amazon S3, Google Cloud Storage, or Azure Blob containers using file paths. So we'll talk about that as well in the next session. Thanks so much for your time. Don't forget I've got a new book coming soon. I hope you found that useful. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video shortly.